Target, home of chic outdoor furniture, an expansive Christmas clearance aisle, and Reba McIntyre's new album. But behind this glittering wall of unbridled consumerism is a website that's been brilliantly designed and engineered, so much so that they've been able to not only survive, but thrive in the era of Amazon's doorstep delivery and Walmart's low, low prices. What's so hot about Target.com, and how did they do it? We're going to tear it up and talk about it today. The video starts right now. Real Tough Candy from the all-new RealToughCandy.com back online with you guys today. So my third month into my first enterprise job, I was tasked with prototyping a six-figure e-commerce site for a potential client. <sighs> you know, last video I said that job was kind of a cluster f My third month in, I was designing an entire e-commerce site by myself. Huge client, okay, huge client. I was so stressed out. It's one thing to tweak a WooCommerce storefront, but designing one from scratch is a very hard thing to do. So what I did was I picked out some of my favorite e-commerce websites and I went from there. One of the first ones I drew a lot of influence from was Target.com. Now the reason I intuitively knew to go to Target.com was because a couple years ago I was at an open source conference in the Twin Cities. Open Source North, great conference, great tech conference, has been sold out for the past couple years now, it's just phenomenal. Well Target is based in the Twin Cities and they had a lot of speakers from their engineering department come and talk about what Target is doing for their website and what they're doing with their web apps and all of this stuff. So when I had to prototype this site, I kept that in mind and I took a lot of influence from this site. I have Walmart's site pulled up here too. I'm gonna reference it a little bit in this video, but mostly focus on Target and what we can steal in a good way. Now, a few videos ago, I talked about a guy who stole in a bad way. He totally ripped off someone's portfolio. We don't wanna rip off this site, However, we can take some pretty good ideas from it. I did a technology lookup on both Wappalizer and BuiltWith. Some of the main tech identified by Wappalizer is Java, Nginx, Lodash, React, Webpack, and going over to BuiltWith, 96 technologies in total. It's, it's insane. And then going down here to the JavaScript stuff, we have everything from jQuery to GSAP to RequireJS to Modernizer, HTML5 Shiv, lots more. Lodash, like I mentioned, Webpack, Babel, Popper J Popper JS, what's that? Email hosting providers, the list goes on. I'm gonna throw these links, both of these, in the comment section so you can check them out. Really insightful, really interesting to see just how many technologies they use. I think, if I recall correctly, they're also using GraphQL. Maybe I'm totally tripping, I don't know, but it is interesting to see that they have embraced some of the newer technologies like React as identified by Wappalizer. But anyways, back to the site. So here are the things that I stole, and I'm just gonna straight up tell you. The first thing I stole was a very simple yet descriptive nav bar. Going over to walmart.com, their nav bar is a little tricky. Some of these things, I don't know what they are unless I hover over them. And in my opinion, I'm not a UX UI expert by any means, but a user should be able to identify things as soon as they look at them. I have no idea what this little widget right here is, but if I hover over it, it says grocery. Then we have the always debatable hamburger menu on here. A lot of people still don't know what that is. In a site like walmart.com, where you're gonna have a lot of people who maybe aren't used to seeing this kind of stuff, this is gonna be confusing for a lot of people. But this is not a walmart.com critique. They have a great site also, but I just wanted to point these things out as compared to the Target site. Going back to the Target site, it's very clear what you're about to click on. The nav bar is priming the user for where they want to go. For example, let's say I'm just here for deals. Well, I know right exactly where to go right away. Oh, clearance, weekly ad, top deals, red card exclusive or cartwheels, sweet. The other thing I stole from my prototype just in this nav bar of Target was this rounded search bar. This is something small, but I think it's a nice touch. It's a little softer, it's a little more inviting, it's a little less angular than something like Walmart where it's just a box. And to get really picky, this little sliver of blue is kind of obnoxious. Again, a very picky thing. 
Um, but not something I would steal for my own prototype. I would much rather take something like this where it's really clean. And then as soon as I click it, there's gonna be a list of things they think that I want. I'm not really in the market for cube storage, but I appreciate the sentiment. You can see possibly the React integration here with these different views. Um, I'm not sure if that's where they implemented React, but if I had to guess, the product display would be a nice place to do that. And also I'm clicking on these items and it's very fast to load. It's lightning fast. I haven't clicked on these pages yet. This is kind of cute. Uh Oh, I'm getting sucked in guys. Butterfly fabric cube toy storage bin. Let's click on it. Just watch how fast this loads. Well, that wasn't a great example, but you gotta believe me, it is lightning fast. I don't like how it brought me down here as it was loading, but the other thing I stole from my prototype was the ratings and review section. It's a really expansive review section, and honestly, I really wasn't expecting this when I first saw it. Lots of consumers chime in on nearly every one of these items. Just for this tote alone, 51 reviews, lots of stars here. And then they note down here if a person's verified or not, and I think that probably just means they purchased it online, and they can track that purchase to this gal named Christina. Some of these other people probably bought it in the store. Some of these people are no doubt competitors. You don't need to have proof that you purchased this item to leave a review, giving a lot of freedom to users. So that's another thing to keep in mind when designing these things, guys. E-commerce sites are one of the trickiest things to design because there's so much going on from ratings and reviews to checkout to payment methods. This isn't a site where you're just gonna pop in a PayPal widget. Designing a robust filter, very hard task. And as you can see, these filters are limited to the category. Like if I typed in Schwinn bicycle, it's not gonna give me a filter for its finish or its shelves, but it's pretty hard to implement, especially when you're dealing with 50, 100,000 SKUs. So this is a great thing to steal as far as UX, UI. I personally would never try to do this alone. I would just pay a team to do this and not worry about messing with it. All right, let's add something to our cart because the other thing I did steal was my checkout and profile page. This checkout page kind of reminds me of Amazon. I mean, you can only get so creative with the checkout page. It is all business. Like, there shouldn't be a cute little emoji here, like waving at you when you're about to buy $5,000 with the products. So these tend to be pretty square and straightforward. Nothing wrong with that. But where's my account? I know I stole something from my actual like profile page. Here we go. This is another thing I stole. Awesome aesthetic, great branding, and all of my stuff here, my orders, my wallet, my gift cards, my addresses that I've stored, my store preference, any type of subscription I have, as well as account settings. Very clean. And right above it, I can easily change my store of preference. Nice clean footer too. Let's see Walmart's. I think Walmart's is pretty expansive and kind of a lot going on. This is fine. I mean, like I said, Walmart's site is just fine. I haven't used it as much as Target's, but preliminarily, it's not the worst, but they do have a ton of stuff down here. Nice clean footer. Again, something to steal or not. I don't think I used Target's idea for their footer. I think I made it actually a lot simpler. I think I had like three little links down here, like a privacy policy, a map and contact info or something. I took inspiration from various sites, plus my own mind, and tried to fuse those all together. Like I said in my video about the guy who stole that guy's portfolio, that's a bad type of stealing. It's okay to steal stuff and make it your own. There's no law against it. It helps make your job easier. And if you're adding your own twist, it means you're putting some brain power into it. You're gonna become a better developer. If you enjoyed this video, please smash a button. Don't care which one it is, as long as it's on my page. <laughs> Hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.